Welcome to Gas Pressure. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what causes pressure and how we measure the pressure of gases. So first of all, what is pressure? Pressure is the force applied to a given area. We represent that with pressure equals the force divided by the area that that force is applied to. So mathematically, this gives us pressure. And the units we use for pressure are pascals, abbreviated PA. Now it turns out that a pascal, one pascal, is an incredibly small, small unit. So we actually typically use kilopascals. Okay, that's a thousand pascals. Kilopascals is going to be the more useful unit for us to use when we're measuring pressure. Well, what does this force being applied to a given area have anything to do with gases? Well, gases exert pressure on the objects they come in contact with. Now this may sound odd to you, but chances are you've probably had experience with the pressure that gases exert in your own life. Think about any time you've inflated or held a balloon. When you squeeze a balloon, the pressure that you feel is the pressure of the gas trapped inside of the balloon. The more air you add into the balloon, the more pressure is exerted and the firmer the balloon feels. So gas pressure, like the air in that balloon example, is caused by the simultaneous collisions of gas particles against an object. Now there's another common example of gas pressure that you're exposed to every day of your life, and that's called atmospheric pressure. Earth's gravity pulls down on air molecules, causing it to blanket the Earth, and we call that atmosphere. Now when the molecules of the air in the atmosphere collide with objects, we call that atmospheric pressure. And we can use a device called a barometer to measure atmospheric pressure. Here we have a simple diagram of a barometer. Essentially what a barometer is, is a container of some kind filled with a liquid. And the liquid in this container is mercury. In the container, there's an inverted tube, and this tube actually normally contains a vacuum, which we can see in this space up here. A vacuum is an absence of all particles. So a vacuum has to have no pressure by default because there are no particles to create collisions. So this vacuum is a zero pressure region. And you'll notice that the mercury has basically been sucked up into this tube up until a certain height. The reason that happens is because outside of this tube there is actually air, it's not a vacuum, so we have all these air molecules. And these air molecules exert atmospheric pressure. So at sea level, you would have a certain amount of pressure based on their collisions with the surface of the mercury, and that amount of pressure would drive the mercury up this vacuum tube to a certain height. Now, if this was at normal ground sea level, this would be 760 millimeters high. This millimeters of mercury unit is how we measure the atmospheric pressure at a given altitude. So as I said, at normal sea level altitude, 760 millimeters of mercury would be how we measure the atmospheric pressure. If we are at a higher altitude, so like the top of Mount Everest, this would be a much lower height of mercury because there's less atmospheric pressure the higher you go. So the distance the mercury rises at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. This is our standard pressure. We also have other units that can be used to represent standard pressure that are equivalent to millimeters of mercury. The equivalent standard pressure in other units are 760 tor, that's another unit that essentially means millimeters of mercury. There's also one atmosphere. That's one we've talked about before. The standard pressure is one atmosphere. And then in metric units, it's 101.3 kilopascals. So kilopascals is what we're going to see frequently because that's our metric unit. But atmospheres is fairly common as well. You'll encounter millimeters of mercury and tor as units much less frequently than atmospheres and kilopascals. But it's useful to know that the idea of millimeters of mercury came from how a barometer measured atmospheric pressure. That wraps up our lesson on what gas pressure is and how we measure the pressure exerted by gases. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.
I'm going to go a little further with gas pressure and talk about another device that's used to measure the pressure of a gas in a confined container. So we just looked at how a barometer measures atmospheric pressure. There's another device called a manometer that can measure the pressure of a gas in a closed container. And it does that by essentially comparing it to atmospheric pressure. Let's see how these work. A manometer is essentially a U-shaped tube. And I can attach something to either end, but we leave one end open. So let's say the top is open to atmospheric pressure. We have one atmosphere pressure, which is 760 millimeters of mercury. And I'm going to fill the manometer with mercury up to a certain level. So up to here, I'm going to fill this with mercury. And for this first manometer, I'm going to leave this end, I'm going to leave this open to the air as well. So I should have one atmosphere of pressure here also. Now if the pressure at both ends of the manometer is equal, I'm going to see equal levels of mercury on both sides of the U-shape. But if the pressure at one of these openings is different, we're going to see that the mercury in this U is going to shift in one direction or the other. So in this one, we'll examine the case of lower pressure, and in this one, we'll look at the case of higher pressure. Both situations will be compared to one atmosphere of standard pressure again. Remember that 760 millimeters of mercury. And if we fill these two manometers with mercury, we're going to see that it's no longer an even level of mercury across the U-shape. In the manometer that's exposed to lower pressure, we're going to see that the level of mercury is higher on one end than on the other. In the higher pressure system, we're going to see that the level of mercury on the end with the higher pressure is going to be lower than the level of mercury on the atmospheric pressure side. Now this should make sense. In the lower pressure system, atmospheric pressure is higher than this low pressure area we have over here. So there's going to be a greater amount of pressure pushing down on this end. In the higher pressure system on the right, we're going to have the higher amount of pressure pushing down over here, making the levels of mercury uneven. Now the question is, how do these manometers actually help us measure the pressure of a gas? Well, the answer is we're going to look at the difference between the heights. So this distance right here between the height on one end of the tube and the other end of the tube is going to be some number of millimeters. Let's say in this case it's 30 millimeters of mercury is the difference in the levels of mercury in this container. That means the lower pressure system is 30 millimeters of mercury less than 760 millimeters of mercury. So I know this one's going to be 730 millimeters of mercury as the pressure. So it's a very simple subtraction to figure out what the pressure of the lower pressure area actually is. The same idea works for this high pressure system on the right. Here I expose the manometer to a high pressure area. It pushed the mercury down so we have an imbalance again here. There's one level. Here's the other one. We're going to find the difference. Let's say this one is 50 millimeters difference. That means the pressure of the high pressure area over here is 50 millimeters higher than the standard pressure coming in. So 760 is the standard pressure coming in. That means this high pressure area over here must be 810 millimeters of mercury. 50 millimeters higher than the standard 760 on this side.